Hey everybody, welcome back. Richie here from RW Hobbies, part number five of my F16 Aggressor Build, a Tamiya 40X scale kit. Now this week, one of my favorite parts, we're gonna do painting. So by the end of this episode, we'll get to this stage where it's all fully painted and ready to go. So before we get started, quick heads up that the sound isn't gonna be great on this one or, or the um, upcoming videos. I'm not running from my usual microphone, so I'm running for the camcorder because I've just recently moved rooms and I've got a lot going on right now, so I don't have time to set up a mic my whole microphone setup. So it'll be okay. Um, it won't be a usual high standards, but just want to give, give you guys a heads up and that'll be the same for the rest of this build series. Um, so I'll get this finished and move on to the next one. So thank you for your patience and understanding and let's go ahead and get started. Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're gonna to get to the painting stage, which I absolutely love, especially when dealing with camo patterns. So build it up, as you can see, I think, I can't remember exactly where we left it, but we've got nose on, um, we've got these guys on the back and in the down position, this guy's loose, mast up the back, help with more camera, and we have some other parts which we're gonna paint separately. Um, these guys go on the bottom, and we have the horizontal stabilizers. So first thing I've done is, I've done is muscle the canopy and painted the copper color, which is that um, the gray color. Now I don't use MRP dark ghost gray, um, sorry, dark gold gray for this. It's too thin, um, it's too watery. I like something a little bit thicker to paint on the clear parts. So I used um, either XF53 or XF54, it doesn't matter too much, there's just a shade difference. Um, so spray that over top. Now what I'm gonna do is prime the whole thing in black and then, as always, create a shallow coat with some white. So black, paint all black. Once that's dry, come back with white and just paint inside all the panels to break it up and create a shadow coat on um, all these parts. So that's the game plan. Um, stepping ahead here, I guess I showed it, which I don't like, that fact that it's in black and white. Tamiya, please do it in color. <laughs> it's, it makes some, these, I don't like getting these color charts in black and white. I just wish these manufacturers would spend a little bit extra and do it in color. But we are doing C, remember, and we are doing the kind of... Um, deserty tan kind of colors. Um, so, free tone camo. And what I've done is, just moving stuff around the desk here, I've taken this, which isn't 48 scale, and um, same as I did with my intruder, the A6 build, which you can check that video as well. I basically scanned it to my computer and scaled it to 48 scale. And so I printed them out on here. If you wish to have these, shoot me an email, I'm happy to share you the file with you and just print it 100%. Um, so these are sized and if I take this part for example it fits there and it's 48 scale so real quick just take apart I think I use this one and I just measured one of the dimensions which I think was the back so I just measured millimeters the back and then I measured it on the chart right here on the color callouts and just based this math to figure out how much bigger this is that one put it in my computer, just simply paintbrush, just increase the size by whatever percent it was. I don't remember what percent it was, it was to be honest. Um, it was a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, and um, got it to this size here. So basically upscaled this onto these piece of paper, and as you see, it fits pretty well. So what I'll do is, I'll take my Tamiya masking tape, which is a fantastic product. Um, last time I used this, I used like half a sheet, and if you get six sheets for about $10, and uh, this is like the masking tape, but it's in sheets. Don't necessarily need the, the lines. Um, this is all they have in stock, and this is actually a little bit more expensive than just plain yellow. So what I'll do, um, basically take this, I'll cut out each of the colors, and I'll trace them onto here, um, which I'll show you in a little bit, and cut them out, and then use them as masks for the actual aircraft. So again, we'll talk about a little bit more detail when we get there. I just want to give kind of an overview of what's going down here. So again, you know, just scan this into your computer upscale it to 48 scale and then you've got your masks um, which saves you 10 15 dollars in buying a mask set but there actually isn't a mask set for this particular variant um, online actually so there we go that's the game plan um, so i'm gonna go ahead and get this in the paint booth get it all primed up in black and the shadow coat and we'll come right back okay so as you can see we've got it painted up um, just black mr service of 1500 and then coming back with some white just to kind of break it up and create that pre-shading. Now, a little rough, so as always, take an old sanding sponge or stick, probably about one to 3,000 grit, a quick rub over, and then immediately it makes it smooth. 
just pick this up from auto cards, you know, cards, real card painting, just between each layer, just to um, you know sand it down and create that smooth layer for the paint to go on top. And um, you're not really taking much paint away, just taking away the high surface, um, especially where paint kind of you know around these curves where when you airbrush with the flow of the air, it always gets a little bit rough in texture. So just going to go around, like I said, just easy as that, just a quick little rub, and obviously I'll make sure I brush off all the extra dust and stuff. So I painted, painted the um, wheel wells in two. We're going to mask those up in a little bit. I also forgot to put the sponge down intake, which I did before I got to the other side, luckily. <laughs> um, and got the other parts painted the same way. Again, just going to quick rub over and um, just smooth that paint surface. So that is the priming stage. Painting, I kind of talked about already somewhat with a camo. So here's our scheme. And as you know, I've taken it, scanned it in, enlarged it, and created my templates, basically. So what I've done is... I'm going to paint this in stages and start the easy ones with these kind of horizontal stabilizers. I think um, just paint these guys up and then work my way onto the aircraft. It's not a big aircraft, so it should be pretty straightforward. There's only three colors. So what I've done is obviously this is my enlarged version in 48 scale. And I've cut this piece out, which should be the first color. And what I'll do is this is the upper side. I'm, I'm going to paint that color down here. Once it's dry, I'm going to mask it and then paint the second color over the top of it. Now, I've got my masking tape, which paper, which we talked about before, Tamiya, great stuff. Um, so I've cut this out as my template, and I've just kind of placed it there on the, um, the paper, maximizing some of the straight edges there, and just drew around it with a pen. Now, all I'm going to do then is just take my scissors and simply cut it out. You could use a knife, I'm way better with scissors. So I'm basically just gonna cut it out and that creates my template. So like I mentioned, gonna paint the color, let it dry, stick this guy on and then paint over the top. So that's the process basically, just working my way around through these pieces I've printed out and um, there's my templates here to get the colors down. Now, that's gonna be pretty much it. It's gonna take me quite a while to go through and do everything in time. And it's double hard because we actually have the underside, which is camo too, whereas most aircraft have a clear underside and um, camo top. So I'm going to start working on a couple of these pieces, like I say, working with the um, horizontal stabilizers, and then I'll kind of come back and kind of show my progress before I get going much on the main aircraft. Right, so working along here, I've done the horizontal stabilizers, and we'll take the masking off in a minute. Um, also painted a few areas on here. You can see in the light, the dark, painting a dark color, and cut the masks, as we talked about earlier. They just kind of go right on the spot, and then just kind of paint over it, like a jigsaw puzzle, working your way around. So, as I always say, it's best to work in little areas here and um, really um, you know, take your time. Color-wise, same as Persian Cat. So I've got lighter colors, Mr. The Lacquer 44, Mr. Hobby. Um, the medium color is 43, Mr. Wood Brown, Tan Wood Brown. The darkest color, I didn't have any of this in lacquer, so I used 309 Aqueous, which is the, the green. Um, but had I, you know, I'm using this up, had I not had this, I'll just, you know, use obviously lacquer because that's my preferred choice and it dries pretty quickly. So then the three colors used, um, 309, 43 and 44, 309 being aqueous, 43 and 44 being the, um, lacquer paint. So that being said, I did peel this little bit area right here. I'm just going to take this guy off and there you go. You see the colors there, the three colors using the masks, pretty straightforward. Um, See there, a little bit made me touch up. I wasn't maybe covering the area quite as much as I should, so you know, need to mask it up and just touch a little bit more on there. So it's always important just to kind of do a little bit over spray than where you really need. So that side's done. Um, this one was just two colors on this side. So again, just mask the dark and paint it the middle color. And there we go. So easy as that. That's how we're doing the masks. Homemade masks, just simply, um, like I said, print them out. Um, on the computer, enlarge it, put it onto masking paper, and just create your own masks. And so that's the easy bit. I'm just going to now work along the aircraft fuselage, and I'll check back in in a wee while. All right, so we've got it all painted up here on the top half at least, and now I'm going to take the masking off to reveal hopefully a nicely masked aircraft. Do, 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 do. Take these off.
And there we go, for the upper side at least. Upper side, should I say. Um, so looking pretty good, quite happy with that one. Um, obviously got the underside, it's going to take a little bit more work with the gear and stuff in a way, and various things. This is a little bit more flatter on top. But um, yeah, actually quite happy with that one. So that's how she's looking, and um, the colours look good to me. I'm definitely going to come back and do some post shading to break this up a little bit. Um, but in the meantime, um, well, certain lines at the front here, I didn't do masking. I used my old clever putty and just masked it off. Um, but yeah, looking good. Let us dry overnight, come back tomorrow. I'll do the other side and then ready to go. So it's been a couple of days work going through this and masking it all off and stuff, but I think we pretty much got it painted up. So upper and lower. Um, now there's a few bits here and there and he's touching up there, um, here, we've got a little bit of touching up going on here, and on um, maybe here too, just a few little areas touch up, um, and also here to see what the, um, the, put the tail on, I think we just need to mask off around here with some, some putty here and just spray the, um, the medium, the medium colour just to kind of tie it all in. So two or three areas there just to touch up. So I'm going to do that and then what I'm going to do next is just kind of dial it all back a little bit and create a bleach effect, which I love to do. Now I'm just going to simply add a drop of blue, drop of blue, <laughs> drop of white, should I say, um, to each color and to the airbrush, come back and just spray inside the panels and you'll see in a minute, um, I'll just break it all up. So just simply a touch of white, bleach the paint work down and all over. Um, and once I've done that, then I will um, mask up the front and paint the nose black and um, pretty much finish the painting pretty much. So looking good, a lot of work going through here and um, again, just a few little touch ups needed here and there. But yeah, looking good. And we're done with the painting, um, looking pretty good. So as I mentioned, just had a little bit of white and basically bleached it back. So touch a drop of white in the color cup with which color and it's lightly, very low air pressure, just lightly you know, put in certain areas and center panels and just really bleaches it down. Now, this may not be for everybody, but this is how I like my aircraft, kind of weathered and bleached. If you want it more of a factory finish, then just skip the step I just did. Um, but cut the mask off the back here, I think looking good. And um, there she goes. And on the bottom, as you can see, it's looking a little bit shiny and glossy. And that is because I've started applying the clear coat, which is the LP, um, I brought the wrong bottle, but LP9 is the um, LP9 um, Tamiya Gloss Lacquer is my go-to. This is the flat version. Um, I just picked up the wrong one for the camera. But, yep, give everything a nice coat just to seal it all in. A um, few reasons, as I always mentioned. Um, firstly, protect the paintwork, and secondly, just create that nice barrier to put the decals down and to start the first stage of weathering next week. So I'm going to go ahead and spray, I'll go ahead and spray the top side uh, with the LP9 so it's all glossy and looking nice and then when we come back next week we will start the decals. So there we go, pretty happy how it's turned out, um, this is a bit of a long process to be honest with you, a lot of lumps and bumps and stuff to get around the bottom, bottom um, but nonetheless it's a nice looking colour, different to the usual boring grey and I definitely into these kind of aggressive camo schemes. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next week, have a great week. Goodbye.